you don't have to work with bulk materials for very long to find that the properties are difficult to measure and the behaviors can be unpredictable. The reason for this is because the factors that control the behavior are very many and slight changes in these properties can cause very drastic changes in the behavior. For this reason, material characterization is the biggest challenge when using a discrete element program, both because of the difficulty in obtaining accurate properties and because the DEM results depend so heavily upon accurate properties. The traditional approach of characterizing materials for your discrete element method software was an iterative process. You start with an, uh, an approximate guess and run simulations, and test them, compare them to observed results, and modify the properties again, run the simulation, compare and observe, and the process went on and on and on until the user was satisfied that the properties were accurate enough to do the job. Because this iterative process took so much time and there was a significant margin for error, Applied DEM has developed a new tool we call a material characterization simulation. In order to use one, you merely have to create a material property or a material condition, modify its values for density, modify its values for particle size and particle size range, and give your best guess at a cohesion value to start with. Then go to the Simulations tab and add a material characterization simulation. Give it a name and click OK. Once done, you add the results from some physical tests that you performed. More will be said about these physical tests in a little bit. Select the material that you want to test or that you want to evaluate these properties for. And by selecting the material, you're selecting the material size and its density and the material size range. And then select any other component that might come into contact with your material condition. Uh, that way we get the sliding wall friction and the rolling wall friction of being evaluated for that material. Once done, you simply save the files and run it like any other simulation. Read the disclaimer as there are some uh, notes to take there. Accept. When running the simulation, you will see that it begins a series of tests. What the material characterization simulation is doing right now, it is, it is performing those iterations for you using a search algorithm. So it's performing a minimal number of simulations to find the value that clo most closely match those generating the results from your physical tests. We're going to let this run, and while we do, we're going to look at those tests again. We include test procedures with Bulk Flow Analyst to tell you how to prepare the material, tell you how to get it dried, test it for density, uh, test angle of repose using standardized tests whenever possible. And you can also change the options for your material characterization simulation. These options include which tests that you wish to perform, and in some cases, what measurements to use for those tests. The search options include the width or the size of the search grid and the increment size within the search grid. Making the search grid smaller will run fewer tests in general. Making the increment larger will also run fewer tests. Making the grid larger or making the increment smaller will typically make the simulation run more tests, obviously taking longer. These settings exist both for the angle of repose tests as well as the wall friction test. When your simulation is done, click to the Run Manager, find the characterization simulation that has already been finished, you click Post Process, and you'll see a report displayed. This report includes the inputs for your materials, as well as the component that you are running those tests against. It will also include outputs, 
or the results of the optimization. In this case, the simulation is suggesting that I use a packing ratio of 1.81. It's also suggesting that I use a sliding wall friction coefficient of 0.4 and a rolling wall friction coefficient of 0.3. It will also display images of the test results that most closely matched those results entered when the simulation began. In this case it's also suggesting that for the materials I use a 0.6 sliding friction coefficient and a 0.3 rolling friction coefficient to achieve the 35 and 41 degree angles for my static angle of repose and dynamic angle of repose tests. And here also it will show the results of the static test and the dynamic test.